Welcome back to First Move. We've all seen movies dubbed from or into foreign languages where the lips don't exactly match up with the dubbed dialogue. Check out this clip from the US series Breaking Bad in Japanese. Mm -hmm. Artificial intelligence can now make lip sync issues a thing of the past by manipulating an actor's mouth and facial expressions to actually match those re-recorded words. Not only that, it can also be used to scrub bad language from the screen as well. This is the trailer of the Lionsgate release of a movie called Fall. It was released last year. The actors dropped uh, one or two swear words, but the distributor wanted a PG-13 release. So artificial intelligence was used to change the actor's lips to match a re-recorded and watered down audio track and also add foreign language versions. Just watch this and you'll see what I mean. The first version has bleeped those profanities. Now we're stuck on this stupid tower in the middle of nowhere. And I don't blame you. And now we're stuck on this stupid. Stuck on this stupid freaking tower in the middle of freaking nowhere. And it's all my fault. Wow. So Scott Mann is the co-founder and co-CEO of Flawless, which pioneered the technology. Scott, I've been so excited to talk to you since I first read an article about what you do. Um, you're also a, a producer and a director, so you understand perfectly the problems that you were trying to solve. Just explain what was the click moment and uh, how the technology works. Uh, well, for me, I, I think... I Having directed films and, and seeing, uh, well, been part of the experience of the care we take when we direct and make movies, as, as a film community as a whole, really, like not just the director, but the actors, everyone who's involved in that, it's a very delicate process. And I think uh, uh, really what uh, sent me on this journey was, was seeing my own film uh, from called Heist uh, uh, with uh, Rob De Niro and Jeffrey mm -hmm. D. Morgan uh, that I'd made. I saw it dubbed in a foreign language, and that's when I realized how bad dubbing really is. Um, in the dubbing, uh, dubbing of old, the, the only process that we really had for the last 100 years, it changes the script, it changes the performance, uh, it loses the immersion, and it's, and it's very much uh, very damaging uh, to, to the, the film experience, really. Yeah, basically all your hard work and the actor and actress's yeah. hard work was completely massacred by by the dubbing process. I'm a huge fan of foreign language yeah. films, but I never listen to the dubbing. I, I read the subtitles, so you have to be in the yeah. right mood. Um, how does the yeah. process actually work? Because we talked about mouth manipulation and we were sort of seeing that yeah. in that clip that we showed where suddenly that the mouth of the actress was saying different words and not swearing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, in the simplest terms, it, it, it's using generative AI. So if you think of generative AI as we know it, uh, text-based generative AI would be in the kind of chat GPT area. Image-based is some of the stuff you might see with stability and, and image generation. Uh, what we do at Flawless is, is, uh, is generative video, generative movies. And so it's what it's doing is it's doing deep learning understanding of uh, of the uh, human face and and understanding it to such a level that it's able to uh, re-render out different outputs uh, at, where you can change the actual synchronicity of the words but retain all the emotional performance. So it's it's quite under the hood, it's quite sophisticated. Um, from a point of view of filmmaking, it's doing this after the film is completed. So at the point in which you finish your uh, version, your home language version that you'd be very proud of, uh, uh, that's when the technology is sex really. Yeah, I mean, this takes a movie that is perhaps niche as a foreign language to a big distributor mm. like a Netflix or Before I Get Fired, an yeah. HBO Max or a Prime, Amazon Prime, <laughs> and it makes it global. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, the, the truth is we, we've been making films and, and watching films uh, uh, and telling those stories almost at, at, at a local level for the last right. 100 years. Like we, we, We're not making global films yet, and this is the first time when uh, we're going to be able to do that. So it's uh, it's really taking what, what would have, say, in English-speaking uh, countries had a limit of, say, 400 million potential audience members. You're widening it out to the full, like, close to a billion population mm. of the Earth. And so I think... I think it's changing uh, the landscape of film distribution, and, and I think that inherently will change the way 
I as a director would go about telling a story because I'd be more aware of different cultures and diversities that uh, that you're making a film for. You're not just making it for a primary audience anymore. So I think it's going to, in the long term, it's going to have a huge impact on how we share and tell stories in a very positive yeah. way. I mean, this is a visual thing as well, primarily mm. a visual thing. But I, I wanted you to watch Donny O'Sullivan, my colleague's um, video with the yeah. voice manipulation. And some of it, obviously, the yeah. Anderson Cooper's wearing wasn't him, worked incredibly well. Other <laughs> parts it? of it, <laughs> yeah, I know, it's always the swear words. Um, other parts of it didn't work so well. I just wondered, yeah. in, in terms of what you're seeing today versus how quickly you think that perhaps this could save time even not bringing the actors back to re-record things if you have to do it in post-production, you can literally fake it all because you've yeah. got hours of their voice. Well, yeah, I think I think a lot of that comes down to uh, going about this the right way. So I think what we've done here at Flaws, we're a film filmmaking company, and we're filmmakers um, um, uh, really building out uh, and, and using these technologies and tools. And I think we've approached it from um, from the right standpoint because I think artistic rights and protecting those artistic rights is as important as the technology uh -huh. piece of this. And there's a lot of responsibility uh, uh, at, in terms of using. The tools the right way and, and and really intersecting and working with the stakeholders as it were like the actors and directors and writers and everyone who has an impact of these these tools who can get benefit from the tools uh, really bringing them into that that central conversation we've done a lot of that here um by proactively reaching out to guilds and unions this kind of thing and i think from a from a responsibility Point of view um it's really about it's really about consent you know like so some of the clips you had in your piece there uh generating say dicaprio's voice you know he hasn't given his consent to that right. and that's a big problem it does need that layer of regulation um and i think the film films in general have worked in that kind of trusted environment for a long time you know so so there's a lot of sensitive material that goes into a movie and the handling of how um, uh, different, say, an actor's performance, how a director uh, is kind of custodian to that, and and everyone, there's 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 already kind of um, pieces there that that are a good uh, foundation mm -hmm. for how to handle this stuff. But I think, yeah, yeah it, it really needs consent from those involved. I can I can understand, and certainly the perspective that I've read in articles about this is that the actors and actresses might be up in arms at the idea that perhaps it negates some of the work they do. But I sort of flip it round and say you have to get their permission in order perhaps even to manipulate their face and the images that we well, see of their faces. So, yeah. so it sort of gives them more power, perhaps not less, at least in certain respects. Well, I think, yeah. yeah, I think they're right. I think, I think there's a huge benefit, uh, uh, certainly for, like, like, I, I think with the case of, of, of uh, vubbing, as we call it here, right? I think the, the big benefit there is it's a broken process previously where the performance is yeah. destroyed. So offering something that does an authentic performance and authentic translation is uh is, is a huge huge benefit to those involved and, and i think i think translation of movies is quite a clean case as well because everyone's entered into something to tell a central story and, and to do and given permissions to do so so it's kind of it's a uh it, it doesn't go into any of the edge cases that, that you were highlighting uh in your piece so i think mm. but but again i think it's about it's about benefit as well it's not about taking away jobs as such it's kind of these are in my mind there's a lot of uh the this this generative ai is probably the biggest change to the film industry since the invention of the camera it's like it's going to be huge wow. across across the way we make movies distribute movies the way we tell stories um and i think that it can be a benefit to all the people involved uh, done in the right way and i think in the case of actors uh in you know in terms of they should again be given the choice of what they'd like to do would they like to go to the studio would they like to uh, do yeah. another way or, or that's a choice for them ultimately yeah uh, just make sure that you um negotiate in your contract to cut off the distribution <laughs> benefits <laughs> and that, that will um assuage those concerns perhaps quite quickly um scott you well, said well, it so you know there is yeah that's there's a truth in that and that, that really yeah. films they're all filmmakers that the, the great you know we want a wider audience for many many reasons like of i think course. the widest audience and that's really the mission here at flawless is to widen the audience I'm going to be shouted out because I've got about a minute left, so you have to make a quick one on that. But you said it like this is going to be more transformative or equally transformative as the advent of the um, the camera, which I mean, wow, yeah. th this is why we're here and able to create these things in the first place. Fast forward five yeah. years. What is it? Yes. What is it going to mean as a, as a movie maker? 
Never mind the distribu distribution, because we've talked about I think, that. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, it's going to mean that um, I, I will go about making a film differently from here on in, uh, knowing the tools available. Um, I think what it really means is, is uh, telling, considering how you're telling those stories, I'd be starting from the ground up, I'd be writing a different story, I'd be directing a different story, I'd be yeah. casting things differently, I'd be going about the process creatively differently. Um, but I think really what it, what it really means by having a wider audience, I think we have the uh, potential to really bring back some of the mid uh, mid-budget movies they're called in Hollywood, which is where the originality comes from. Yeah. And you kind of have to have a, a, an environment to make those movies again. And, and the way to make those movies again, in my opinion, is you, you have groundbreaking tools that allow you to make kind of bigger movies more easily, but, uh, but also the, the, the increase in audience means there's an affordability factor where Absolutely. Um, it, it travels further. So, so I, I think it's actually the way, for me, it represents a way to save Kind of Hollywood and filmmaking community in general, uh, of, of and get back into original storytelling. Yeah, it, well, it's a dramatic change in the the cost, the economics mm. of, of movie making. Scott, I'm being told off. I'm always told off, but I've now I've really pushed it. Up. Thank you. Great to chat to you, Scott Thank Mann, co-founder and co-CEO yeah. of Flawless. Great to chat. Exciting. Thank you.